from gardening to animals to extreme renovations. Welcome to Homesteading at College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today we're going to make a set of cattle racks. Today we're going to make a set of cattle racks for my truck. Uh, if you've watched my videos you knew that I had an old Dodge pickup that had a set of aluminum homemade cattle racks on it. Well I have missed those things so many times when I wanted to haul stuff in this uh, new to me old Ford F-150. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a set of cattle racks to go on this truck. Now when I was a kid all pickups had cattle racks on them where I lived. Uh, we used them to haul hogs, we hauled uh, goats or sheep, uh, dogs, whatever in the back of the truck, kids, whatever in the back of the truck with a set of cattle racks on. Uh, as a matter of fact I saw a guy haul a 14 hand tall mule in the back of a little bitty pickup truck with a set of cattle racks on it. The mule's back was taller than the cattle racks. I never saw a truck squat so bad in my life. But he hauled it wherever he was going, I guess. So, and that mule, his head sticking up above the cab, he was just tied to the halter, tied to the cattle rack there, and he was just riding along. He didn't care. So, anyway, I'm going to make a set of cattle racks. And uh, I've searched YouTube to see if there are other videos about cattle racks, and I can't find any. I think I found one. A guy was a landscaper. He had made a set of cattle racks. Well, I'm not making a set of cattle racks as, as heavy duty as he did, but mine are going to be just fine for what I need to do. Now, let's talk about the truck a minute, and it's made to make cattle racks on. I don't know why more people don't use that anymore, except they like their truck to be pretty. Well, I don't care. I want my truck to be functional. So, let's show you. Now, this is a six-foot bed pickup, and uh, every pickup has these holes in it. Now, this one's in my bed liner, this is, has this special stuff. I've taken one out and show you what to look for. I went ahead and took this one out already. You can see that that's a nice square hole. Well, a piece of uh, pressure treated 2 before cut specifically to fit in that hole is exactly what you do. And then it stands up here, oh, however many however many inches you want it to be up. For me, I want my cattle racks to be about 30 inches high. So that means that at 30 inches, then it's about 20 inches, 24 inches into the bed. So it's 54 inches. A goat's gonna be able to walk in there with no problem. Uh, that's probably as big an animal as I'd haul in the back of my truck. But you also, there are other advantages to cattle racks. Uh, you're hauling a mattress. You can fasten it to the cattle rack and it can't fly out of the back of your truck. Uh, you can haul it upright instead of hauling it laying down. There's a whole bunch of advantages to using cattle racks. Uh, if you want to haul a load of mulch, you can pile it up higher than the back of your truck. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get at that and let you see what I'm doing. Okay, first step is getting these uh, fillers out of here. So I'm just going to come down here, get under it, and pop that baby out. Now, this is what was in there. Okay. That made it so it couldn't get to the square hole. And I think what this is made for is so that you can put a round piece of steel or something in it, but that's not what I'm going to do. I've got to get the other three out, and then I'll come back to you. Okay. And looking at this hole... On mine, it's two and a quarter by one and three quarters by five and a half inches deep. So I want to cut a piece. Now, what did I say it was? Nothing like being brain damaged. Two and a quarter. It needs to be two and a quarter and five and a quarter or five and a half inches deep. And then I want it to be 30 inches above above the truck bed. So I'm gonna get a piece of two by four and do those cuts. Now, the last four weeks of taking a toll on my shop. It is a pure tea mess. 
So I'm going to have to clean that up before I can start on anything. Uh, I love my radial arm saw. It allows me to do things so that they're uh, the same length every time. So, pull this out here. I know that I need five and a quarter, so I'm going to go ahead. I want it to be 30 inches above, and it's five and a quarter down in that little hole. So I'm going to go ahead and make all of these 36 inches. So I come back here, and I've got my table set up such that I can come back and mark 36 inches, which there's already a mark here, but I never knew which one was which. Now I've got a new mark, 36 inches, and I fixed my table up so that I just set this on here, slide it up, line it up, take the clamp, and clamp that down, and as fast as I can put boards on there, I can cut 36 inches exactly, every one of them is exactly the same length. Okay, now to use my bandsaw to cut the, the lip, I went ahead and marked it. I marked it on both sides because, you know, the way my bandsaw sets, sometimes it's hard to see. And uh, so I mark it on both sides, so whichever side I can use easier. Now, I'm going to cut this out. I went ahead and cut a groove with the radial arm saw because that just makes life simpler. So let's go ahead and, and cut this on the bandsaw. Get my bandsaw adjusted here to begin with, so that that just fits under. It's already set, so I don't have to fool with none of that. see if it fits. Now the moment of truth. Let's see if this fits. Okay, it's going to be a little tight. What I'm going to have to do, the corners of this are rounded, so I'm going to have to shave it off, which I'll just use my pocket knife for that. Okay, a minute or two worth of wiggling. Let's see. What's it hitting on? Okay, there's a thing down in there where this should set flush, but it's a little narrower. There we go. It'll force down in. And that'll hold it solid. See here? When you get a piece of wood in there, That'll be held pretty solid when you put the other wood across the sides. So now, I just need four more of these. Now, one of my favorite tools in the shop is good old-fashioned yardstick. Now, this one happens to be a meter stick. It's metric on one side and a yardstick on the other. Now, when I originally designed this project, I wanted to use uh, the three-quarter inch thick, six-foot long, uh, fencing planks. Well, they're t not long enough to fit on that six foot bed of the truck. It's actually six foot and like eight inches. So that fell about eight inches short. So what I had to do was buy these. Well, the fence planks were a dollar and sixty eight cents a piece. 
These were $4.79 a piece. So, hurt my feelings, but I went ahead and bought it because I just need some cattle racks. Now, I don't want to put these on hold. There's no reason to do that. So, I'm going to split them in half. And if you measure this, this is exactly five and a half inches. So, what I want to do is I want to set the rip fence on my table saw. First off, I'm going to bring up the blade. But I only want the blade to come up. Go away, spider. I got a spider hanging on my... Okay, I'm going to bring up the blade. But now, I've taken the... I've taken the... Uh, guard off so that you can see what I'm doing but by all means if you've got a guard on your saw make sure you use it uh, I've taken this one off just for clarity so that you can see what I'm doing uh, so let me pull this up and I just want that saw to just come through that board by about a quarter of an inch just a little bit more because sometimes the boards are a little bowed and for it to make that quarter of an inch there might be a quarter of an inch of bow so I like to come up just a little above that now to set my fence well this is exactly five and a half well that's two and three quarter inches but this saw blade cuts out a one eighth of an inch so I gotta take a sixteenth off of that three quarters of an inch. Well, three quarters is 12 sixteenths. So if we subtract that, 11 sixteenths is what I need. Well, my, my ruler here is only ruled off in eighths. Half an eighth works for me. So I'm gonna pull this up here. Pull my fence over. Well, I knocked my thing over. I get that before I can start. All right. So now, push that over. There's two and a half. Quit that. Two and a half, two and three quarters. And split that. There. There's where my fence ought to be. Now, when it comes to pushing this lumber through, you don't want to push through by hand. You don't want your hand anywhere near this blade. So what I do is I just use a piece of 2 before to push these through with. Uh, you can use a big piece, you can use a little piece, it don't matter. Uh, I used to have a, a piece that I kept that was uh, cut just for this, but I don't know where it's got to. Uh, apparently somebody's borrowed it and didn't put it back. But that's the way it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Okay, got them cut. They're pretty much the same size. There's a little bit of variance because of the bow, but it'll be all right. Nobody will be able to tell once it's on the board, once it's on the truck. So I've got uh, uh, four of these for each side to cut, so I'll go ahead and get at that. I could do this the hard way, but what I've got here, I've got a 5 16 bolt. And I've selected a drill bit that's just a little bit bigger than a 5 16 bolt. Now I could drill all of these. I could put them up there on the truck, clamp everything, and drill everything right there. That's the hard way. 
Now I don't mind to drill just the uh, just the boards. That'll be fine. That's not a big deal. But I don't want to drill every one of these two by fours. You know, this pressure treated stuff sometimes kind of tough. So what I did was I decided where the boards were going to be, how wide the spaces was between. And if you're building one of these, you can do your own, decide how wide the spaces you want. Uh, I'll just tell you, I wanted them big enough for me to be able to stick my hand in there. The reason being is I haul a lot of stuff using these, uh, using these cattle panels. And they'll stay on the truck all the time unless I'm hauling something that I can't fit inside of them. They'll stay on the truck all the time. Uh, so I will go ahead and uh, drill the holes in here sitting at my drill press because that's so much easier than doing them right there on the truck. Okay. Good sharp real bit, a thing of beauty forever. Three more to go. Okay, that finishes my uprights. Got them all drilled, got them all cut out. Uh, I'll still round over the edges a little bit but it's all done uh, according to the thermometer here in the shop it's 85 degrees so that's where I'm going to call this video today uh, so I guess this will be a two-part video on building a set of cattle panels we got the uprights done I got all of the boards uh, cut for the sides and now I've just got to uh, install the uprights drill but I also have to make a set for the cattle panels that goes in the front, goes across behind the uh, wind, behind the back wind glass. So I've got to make that those uh, brackets that holds that, and I just use a piece of uh, angle iron to do that with. And uh, I'll probably show you that in the next video, and then we'll assemble these cattle panels. Now, if you like this homesteading kind of stuff, this do-it-yourself, all that kind of thing, be certain to come to the channel and subscribe. If you look right there on your right, which is just right over here, there's a little subscribe button. If you click that, that'll take you to our page. And when you go to our page, you can like the channel and you'll get to see our videos. They'll let you know if you click the little bell. If you click the little bell, it will let you know when uh, we upload a video. We upload videos every Sunday. Uh, Today's Saturday, so it will, we'll probably upload this video on Sunday, and it'll be next week before we do the second, before you'll get the second part of this video. So be certain to come out so, to like or, and subscribe. Uh, there's also a link to our Facebook page where we give you other information about stuff that we might be doing here on the homestead. So now it's uh, 85 degrees, or 80, well, it's actually only 80 outside, but here in the shop with this metal roof, the thermometer says it's 83, and it's time for me to get out of this heat. So I'm going to get on to the next thing.